Hey friends, today on Gardening with Creekside, we have taken a little road trip to our sweet friends, Archie and Tina's house here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Uh, so Winston-Salem is still a zone 7B, uh, has basically all the exact same growing conditions that we have at Creekside Nursery and our house. Tina and Archie um, started out as customers of ours and then quickly turned into some sweet friends. They have an absolutely gorgeous, amazing garden. Um, their property is about a little less than an acre and right here on a nice neighborhood street. So if you hear cars goes by, just know that that's where we are. Um, but so much fun. I have just thoroughly enjoyed the friendship and then the garden camaraderie with Tina. I say that she's a very bad influence on me as far as a gardener because she's the one that turned me on to Brushwood Nursery. She got me getting my uh, David Austin rose standard. So she'll send me these things like, oh, did you know about this? Did you know about this? And I'm like, no. So then we, you know, swap ideas and uh, we're, we actually are very good influences on each other in the, um, as far as the gardens are concerned. I wanted to come and do a garden tour of their space because like so many of um, the rest of the country and gardeners, they started gardening really heavily um, in 2020, right? So they both work for NASCAR. They are drivers for the, like the stagecoach, the motorhomes for two of the really prominent NASCAR folks. So Tina works with Eric Amarillo and that means when they are working with NASCAR, it has a huge long season, right? So they can be gone for, you know, weeks upon weeks at a time. COVID came, of course, and like the rest of the country shut down and they were at home. So they started doing a little bit more gardening. And fast forward almost three years later, here we are. Wanted to share it with you for sure. So we're gonna take a little informal garden tour and um, I just wanna show you their space and it kind of explain how they have come to um, have the beautiful gardens that they have. Sitting in here in the front yard, um, this is the shady area right now so that's why that's why i chose here uh, so this is their home they have been here for 29 years but like i said in the last three years they really have started to develop all of their gardens um, this is going to be in the shade um, for about in the next hour till about 11 30 and then it will get into full sun because the sun will be setting behind me um, they have these beautiful the uh, thundercloud purple plums just like we have at our house um, and underneath <laughs> if you're in if you're in the north carolina or the southeast you know that we have had an unseasonably cool wet spring and so tina's like my annuals are not doing anything but just imagine how gorgeous they're going to be once the heat hits we're waiting on the heat um, you've got the blue my mind of ovulus you've got pentas back there then we're going to move on to some lantana yellow lantana um, Tina is a huge fan of hydrangeas and roses, and so she has got some of the new tiny quick fire hydrangeas that took a really kind of a big hit in the spring, um, excuse me, in the winter with the Arctic blast. So she had to really kind of cut them back. But here um, they have a fence, kind of a decorative fence that separates um, their property from their neighbors. But just imagine, like I can see her vision, right? So you have the low of the blue my mind, then you've got the pentas and then you've got the lantana in the back. Gorgeous. Um, I've asked Tina, I said, what is in your soil? Because she has some very happy plants. Here she has the blue meringue dark purple lilac that is uh, putting on a whole nother flush of blooms right there. Um, she has Munstead lavender. I have never seen um, so many pollinators in the gardens just covered in bumblebees and honeybees. She's got gorgeous echinacea right here. Some of the things she has labeled and some of the things that she remembers what they are. <laughs> and some of the things she's like, eh, yeah, I don't remember exactly what that is. Um, beautiful lemon zest rose, but I love her color palette, right? So she's got yellows and pinks and blues and light purples, just absolutely stunning you can see that she repeats that right so she has the echinacea here she's got more roses coming on down then another echinacea right here the guara lots of david austin roses throughout here um, with 
being in North Carolina, she is exactly kind of in the same position that I am in with my roses in the fact of we've already had our massive spring flush. And so now we're in the kind of the deadheading, pruning back. So we've kind of missed the rose like in full glory, but yet she still has some that are had those a couple of few little little stragglers in there and then lots of beautiful of the giant lamb's ear that she um, happily will you know divide and then moves throughout her garden now as we come down right so they've got they've just put in within these last three years lots of paths so their neighbor had a massive maple tree just right over here that really gave this whole area tons of shade they had it come down um, they took it down because like evidently it took up this entire space right here and it was on Archie and Tina's um, chimney right there and so they were worried about that so they took it down when the tree came down of course it opened it up and gave them massive gorgeous um, sun garden right here we're gonna go down there in a second but we're gonna hit across the front of their house first now <laughs> North Carolina we grow things big um, you can see they have these beautiful pinnacle hydrangeas right here and you're like oh what are those? Well, those are bobos. Bobos are supposed to be on the shorter side. And those are every bit of four and a half, almost five feet tall. Yes, she prunes them, um, but they are just very happy. Like I said, she has some great soil. Their gardens are on irrigation because I, I was asking about that because of them traveling. Like literally in the spring, they can be gone for eight weeks at a time which blows my mind that you can be gone for eight weeks and you can step away from your garden and it looks like this. Um, it just is crazy. So basically almost everything is on irrigation. They have multiple zones that run one time a day for 10 minutes, 10 minutes per zone. And they do not have it like it's not a PVC system. They have the hoses hooked up to their spigots with timers on that way so they just have multiple zones throughout both the front and the backyard and then of course their baskets they have lots of hanging baskets lots of hay racks that they have um, going on you can see the beautiful hay rack here that they got from Kinsman Garden Company gorgeous sweet potato vine they've got caliber coas super bells in there lantana salvia um, but one of the bad things like Tina says is as they do travel so much when um, they came home from uh, the Darlington trip they realized that they had uh, infestation of budworms so that all the blooms were gone so they had to you know treat those and then start all over so but I just think it is positively amazing what they have done gorgeous water features throughout their gardens that they have going on beautiful sounds right We've got the uh, banana cream two Shasta Daisy right here. These are more bobos with their sprinter boxwoods. So the idea she said was that the bobos would just kind of, you know, go right above the sprinters. Well, again, huge, gorgeous, beautiful blooms on those. Really, really happy. Um, and then we're gonna kind of hit over here because I wanna show you this. They are also huge fans of unique stones. So they've got multiple pieces of unique stone throughout here this is the savannah urn and gorgeous helichrysum so this is all going to be annuals right full sun container this is gorgeous helichrysum beautiful silver it is a beast of a plant so it's very very vigorous then you've got the lemon tart lantana you've got two of the diamond snows in here and Tina did have caliber coas, super bells, um, but they just, with our wet, wet season so far, they were not doing well. So she took them out and then put the, what is this, sparkling, sparkling rosé, um, the pink one from, the name escapes me right now, from Proven Winners. Um, super fun because they do travel, and as they travel, they hit local garden centers all across the country look at this i have never seen a white kufia before so of course we're all very familiar with vermilionaire right hummingbird magnet well this is a white kufia and tina said the hummingbirds do love it she said they were all over it just this morning so she's got a couple in here um, different areas that she has um, there's another one just right beyond um, so much fun but because of them traveling right so 
what what Tina and Archie do is they drive their the, the drivers motorhomes right so they drive the motorhomes to the different racetracks they get them set up they do all like their grocery shopping they get everything cleaned all prepped so when the drivers and their families come the coaches are ready to go and then they'll have some Tina and Archie will have some time off so while that's happening they go and visit local garden centers and she'll collect plants and so when they're at the racetrack they'll be sitting out in the sun and then when it's time to move from racetrack to racetrack she puts them in the shower secures them in the shower so that way they are nice and travel she can get them watered while they're in the shower so these plants have come some of these have come from all over the country um, Michigan and New Hampshire and like out west and all these so you know such fun things so that she can find these plants and bring them to her garden and they all have a story behind it right so she remembers oh i got this and so and so and this and so and so fantastic this is a new bed that they developed this past fall obviously this is going to be a lot of shade right right here on their driveway so you can clearly see right so here is the top of their driveway and then comes down you've got this uh looks like a pear like a bradford pear couple of those right there but then tons of pine trees so they developed this into a shade garden they've got some rhododendrons back there in the back but everything here in this bed has been put in since the fall lots of hellebores lenten roses pulmonaria the um, feather falls grass uh, let's see hostas all sorts of great things calla lilies these are the hydrangeas they're just absolutely gorgeous i think oh shoot what did she tell me these were these were i want to they're the new skyview i want to say they're maybe their skyview and then but look at the color so these are the let's dance skyview oh here's a tag we're gonna we're gonna pivot right quick see this is why it's so helpful she does have tags on some of her like permanent plant tags and we're gonna flip this over yes all right good skyview so this is one of the newest ones a nice beautiful mop head but look at the color so this is going to be what we call ph dependent so your color is going to be based on your soil ph and you can really see the progression of blooms right so you've got a sweet little bud as it starts to open up and then as it is maturing gorgeous color have only been in here uh, since this spring then got a cute little munchkin munchkin is one of the smallest if not the smallest oak leaf hydrangea great great addition then of course more unique stone in here and then they repeated kind of that same planting underneath this pear tree with the feather falls hellebores pulmonaria um, so it gives them lots of options still right because they have all this beautiful empty space that they can plant it is getting that morning sun now so she might have to transition as she comes down but the sun does set right here so um, definitely gets lots of afternoon shade all right so let's um we're going to go back up to the front yard and then come around and show you um, that little sunny area that, on the side of the house gorgeous so here we are back at the front yard you're going to go down this path love it so they created this path again uh, once that tree came down and it turned into a full sun area. Lots of beautiful creeping flocks. Creeping flocks, of course, is great in the spring because it gives you that gorgeous flush of color. It's one of the earliest perennials to start blooming. More of the giant lamb's ear. As you can see, she's repeating all that throughout. Look at this verbena. This is a meteor shower. <laughs> so it's growing in the middle of a peony, really, and then look how beautiful and tall that thing is is that not fantastic for us the meteor shower is a perennial um so it is doing really well there and then look at this hardy geranium this is roseanne y'all this is one plant one plant and um because of their travels a lot of times tina does not buy like huge like three gallon you know big plants a lot of these are going to be um, quartz or maybe a one gallon but that is just absolutely exquisite gorgeous love those hardy geraniums this ruby falls red bud of course is a weeping variety of a red bud but gorgeous absolutely 
stunning. I was asking her if, if it does get any um, burn because it has that really burgundy, of course, that dark foliage. And she said by the end of the season, maybe on the front, it just gets a little bit of crispiness. Um, but just a beautiful specimen of that weeping red bud. Just gorgeous. And of course, I love it with that blue paired in of that hardy geranium. And then of course we have hydrangeas, right? Hydrangeas through here on this side, it was the strawberry sundaes. Um, beautiful panicle hydrangeas that are getting ready to explode in color. And then we come to this side. Um, remember how we talked about how the bobos are overachievers in North Carolina? Yeah, you wanna take a guess what these are? Mm-hmm, little limes, yeah. Little lime hydrangeas. Yeah, little lime's not so little here in North Carolina. These things are huge, but absolutely covered in buds. I cannot imagine what this hedge looks like when it is in full bloom. And Tina is um, tender, uh, she is, Tina is, she is not a tender gardener. So she is not afraid to come out here and whack on these things. And she cuts them down and they have flushed out like this. Is this not just absolutely beautiful and glorious? Can you imagine coming through here when they're all in bloom? Oh my gosh, okay. So, beautiful fence, right? Love the architectural detail on that and the gate. So we're gonna come on through the door. Um, so much fun. Now, you'll notice that she does have some hydrangeas, some of those like the big leaf hydrangeas through here. Um, and what they, <laughs> it's a fun story here with this. We're gonna come on through. Look at this beautiful one right here. So um, Archie's mom is, lives in like an assisted living um, facility. And so she has like an apartment, right? So she doesn't have like a big garden space that she can use, but every mother's day, Archie gives her a hydrangea from, you know, whether it's a florist or whatever, right? So a nice little small um, mother's day hydrangea. Well, so she keeps it for a while, lets it bloom, enjoys it, but then she gives it back to Tina. So then Tina takes it and then comes and plants it in her garden. So she has all of these beautiful hydrangeas that were Mother Day presents to Archie's mom. This one is a massive beast, massive. Again, she cut it down to the ground, um, but it is covered in buds got the first bloom right there look at that has no clue what they are right don't because a lot of times when you buy those hydrangeas from a uh, grocery store or the florist they don't tell you the variety but clearly it blooms on new growth and it's just going to be stunning um, so let me give you kind of the perspective of the whole backyard here first have a beautiful deck with plants up here. We'll go hit that later. Um, and then this whole area has been um, developed. <laughs> this path was put in and extended uh, just this year. So lots of gorgeous, gorgeous flowers. All right, we're gonna start on this side because there's a monarch that I wanna share with you here. All right, so you come around, come through the gate, look at these eucharists. Are they not gorgeous? I mean, just beautiful red color. Moving down, the Pugsters, Pugster Amethyst. And this sweet butterfly has been hanging out on these flowers um, the whole time that I've been here. So clearly the butterfly bush uh, is aptly named because it is a huge pollinator attractor. This sweet thing is just having the absolute best time. Daylilies, these are the Shalom Peony Display, so it'll be a nice sweet peach. Got catmint in here, lots of different Japanese maples, um, irises, um, and then we'll, we'll continue down there in a moment. Now, we're gonna flip ever so slowly back to over here. Uh, lots and lots of sun in this space in the morning. In the afternoon, it does get shaded because the sun will set behind the house. White Swan Echinacea, gorgeous color. Everything looks so fresh and so lovely. The spun silk, the amazing daisies spun silk. This was one plant. So Tina said this was one plant and it has just taken off and is loving life. But this is one from Proven Winners because um, you can tell with that classic, the spun silk, where it looks like the petals have just been um, kind of shredded. 
just gorgeous. And then look at her basket boy. So she has her Charleston basket boy right here and it is filled with all sorts of beautiful sedums and sempervivums. Um, just a beautiful, beautiful little display right there of those succulents. And then look at this climbing hydrangea. That is one happy climbing hydrangea. So climbing hydrangeas, they say for the first couple of years, they just kind of sit. They don't do a whole lot. And then they take off. So I think they're about to experience takeoff. You can see they've got a bud right there. Tina would love for it to climb up the pole and then to be able to like wrap around the um, base of their their deck which i told her i said i don't think that's going to be a problem <laughs> i think it's going to happen really easy but do you not love what they've done here underneath their deck so let's see if i can tiptoe through the garden right quick they have this space underneath their deck beautiful shade so they've put the stone in great chairs look at all of that sweet lighting that they have up here and it's just a nice little respite they have a fan over there in the corner that they can just enjoy and then look like look at the view look at that isn't that just gorgeous it is absolutely stunning Archie is so cute he um he said he this is his proudest thing is he has these hostas right here um, when the maple tree came down from the neighbor this was one hosta and then obviously of course it went into full sun so they had to move the hosta so he said I got my hori hori and I divided them out and planted them and they are some happy plants right here look at that so I love the idea that design idea of taking that one type of hosta that one plant and then coming through and just planting it all right here and as they grow they will just fill in and get nice and big nice and happy um, and it's the perfect spot underneath the deck right here nice and shady all right, let me flip back around over to the path. Now, continuing on our little tour here, we've got beautiful um, yarrow, Achillea, right here. Just, a, I love how she just mixes everything, right? You've got gorgeous, the Pugster pinks. These are probably pinkers because they're a deeper pink. The cat's pajamas right here with some gems and some more of the um, giant lamb's ear. But, so, here you see their limelight standard tree form and she's in a container and you'll notice that she's strapped down so gardening is all about right you have to adapt you have to overcome you have to figure out what in the world is happening in your space and then make adjustments so what was happening with their limelight standard is like it was just struggling for like years and it would like flop over in big windstorms so just recently they dug her up and realized that the ground was too wet here and like really no roots existed like the roots were just not there whatsoever put it in the container and then went ahead and strapped it down so that way you know the thunderstorms that come and the wind it won't fall over they're gonna once she is nice and happy and established in the container then probably this fall they will move her somewhere else out into the garden but that's just the thing right you have to figure out like why are you struggling what's going on and investigate and then don't be afraid to act go for it just do something um, to try to make the, the situation better sometimes you're gonna win and sometimes you're gonna lose but you're gonna learn from that so uh, that is what is happening with the uh, limelight standard there and then just gorgeous got some white veronicas here look <laughs> at this oregano this is the drops of jupiter oregano right gorgeous chartreuse color i love this plant she has two of them she has another one right down over here um, clearly a very very happy plant um, and it is going to be blooming here not before too long but that uh, great perennial from proven winners brings such a beautiful pop of color and then she's got all tons more david alston's throughout here um, sedums and again the giant lamb's ear i love how it's repeated throughout the garden and then she has her incredibles Look at those gorgeous hydrangeas. Are they not stunning? Let me just show you this one bloom right here is, well, there's a bunch of them, but look, this is how it gets its name. So here is my hand and look at that massive bloom. 
I mean, just absolutely gorgeous. So those Incrediballs doing quite nicely. They will get a break from the afternoon sun because again, the sun sets way back over here. So it gets a break. They've got Monardas in here and the Italian ice roses, just stunning. Now, you see that container in front of me. That is the Firelight Standard. And she's had this one for a couple of years now. So the Firelight Standard is in, um, in its container, right? And then she underplants it with all the beautiful annuals in here. So she has the Helichrysum again, she's got Diamond Snow, and then some Caliber Coas. Just beautiful. Look, this hydrangea is covered in pollinators. Honeybees, I'm trying to get to them, they're all over the place, but the honeybees are just loving this hydrangea. But is that not gorgeous? Firelights are the one few ones that will actually kind of turn that pink for us. It's already starting to do put on a little bit of pink hues. She is much more advanced than my uh, fire lights. My fire lights are just starting to bud out, um, probably because this gets a little bit, maybe a little bit more sun, but just a beautiful, beautiful hydrangea that is very, very happy. While we're standing here in this space, uh, <laughs> This bed did not exist about a week ago, <laughs> and they have put it in, worked their little hearts out. That is the thing about when, um, because of the nature of their job, right? So they're gone for so long, and then they can be home for a week, maybe two weeks, kind of at most, right, um, during the season. So when they are home, they work their little tails off. Archie said, yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> And rightly so, but just a beautiful space, still kind of sitting on this. I mean, it's only been less than a week, right? Trying to figure out how to plant it. So Tina's little tip is when she has plants that she knows that she's going to put in the garden, she'll leave them in the containers and then place them where she thinks she wants them. Sees how they do, right? Watches them. How are they going to respond? How are they going to do? This looks like a... Um, a sweet little grass that she wants to put around her little bunny container. Um, so she's gonna sit on it. Are they happy? Are they responding well? If they do, she plants them. If they not, then she will move them. Um, this tree, I did not even realize it right here, is a camellia. Massive, gorgeous, um, Sasanqua camellia that's been here, she said, really when they first moved in, so, you know, 28, 29 years ago um, and she said I did not know what I was doing when I planted this thing and you can see probably that it is really close to the house um, but as gardeners we all do that right we all when we're starting we make mistakes we don't know better and so we go and we plant something in completely the wrong spot right this is way too close to her house and she fully, fully recognizes that. Um, but the thing is, is that she learned from her mistake, and so she knows better, so she does better, but she loves this camellia. It is, she said, just absolutely stunning in the fall when it blooms. It is not damaging their house, so you don't have to worry about the damage of the house, because that is a basement, and they can clearly see if there were gonna be any damage. There's not. Um, so she leaves it and so she's going to enjoy it while it's here and just learn from your mistakes and move on. Uh, but this is going to be a fun bed. Can't wait to see how they do it because this is kind of like my forest pansy bed where it'll be shade and then it moves to sun. So she can have all sorts of great fun plants in this space. Now, coming back around to um, the rest of the gardens. Uh, so just this spring, this section of the path was not there. This was grass, this was the lawn, um, but it got to be too cumbersome to mow that. So then they installed and extended this path um, and, and just got everybody in there nice and happy. So she has some little pockets that she can come in and plant annuals or more perennials if she likes, but just a beautiful collection of, you've got Amsonia, more roses, lemon meringue baptisia back there. Look at that. And I told her, I was like, yep, Tina, they, uh, <laughs> they are big, beautiful beasts for sure. So she's got three lemon meringues. Then look at, oh, there's our butterfly again. Then this is the new Achillea. This is the, what, the peach sky. And so that is just huge. Look how tall that thing is. It is every bit of two and a half to three feet tall. Um, Shasta daisies. 
I believe she said these were tidbits. Yes, oh, yep, there's a little sign. Firelight tidbits, nice and petite. The yellow bells, forsythia right here. More roses, uh, so lots of gorgeousness all the way through here. Roses of Sharon, she's got her Russian sage underneath her, her little bird bath right there. Um, the roses continue. Lots of gorgeous, beautiful, and that little butterfly is having the best time around here. This is the Blue Fortune Agastache. Look at that. That thing is massive. And again, the pollinators are so happy and are loving this plant. So we've had a bumblebee on here um, the whole time that I have been here. But beautiful, nice, light blue flowers on it. And you can see how many buds are on this thing. So it is going to give gorgeous color all summer long. I love this nine bark. So this is the ginger wine nine bark. And Tina says it does absolutely great here, which clearly it does. But is that not just a beautiful, nice, dark specimen? I love it up against her fence, her white fence. You can really see the dark color. <clears throat> see that beautiful dark color um, just stunning and as we come down she's got irises this is um, lion king and look at this these are ones that she had gotten from us uh, last year maybe look at this is it not gorgeous look I love it absolutely love it so in her travels, again, there's um, back here, a nice little small, this is a Pacific fire coral bark. Yes, it's tiny, it's going to grow. That's what I love it. She's got a little gardenia right here. Had, um, just like a, most of the country, had a lot of damage from the Arctic blast that came through right before Christmas time. Um, and so, yeah, you just have damage and you adapt and you overcome and you move on with it. So she brought those hydrangeas all the way back around here. Um, I want to say these are more tidbits right here. I believe. I believe. Yes. And then look at that. This was the witch hazel. Look at that. Just gorgeous. So I just love all of her different colors and textures. And so she's got that yellow up against her echinaceas. And then she has another shade of yellow with the one in a melon um, echinaceas. The lesser catmint, this lesser catmint will do beautiful white airy plumes. It is a nepeta. I hate that they call it a lesser catmint because it's not lesser. Um, it is fantastic. And then of course she has this beautiful temple of bloom. Um, tree here from Proven Winters. Great, beautiful. And then her collection of her little heartwood birdhouses. Let me flip around so you can see a better view of that. All right, so here we go. So now you can see everybody properly and they do have birds in there and they are nesting. Um, but just, she bought a collection of them, put them on the post, right? Those four by fours, painted it and then voila. Underneath this fantastic weeping willow, with her double play doozy spireas that she planted um, around here so that way it comes all the way around and then look at these cute little barberries are they not just the sweetest little things these are the sun joy mini saffrons because she wanted something low she didn't want anything real tall right here and then that color contrast up against those doozy spireas is just beautiful i i love it it is just fantastic. And then coming on down, transitioning back down here with more. Um, this is a geisha gone wild maple. Look at that. Look at the color of that. Isn't that beautiful? Just stunning. Gorgeous colors, gorgeous textures. More of the daisies, you've got sedums, you've got the let's dance can do hydrangeas, beautiful lace caps. She's got three of them right here, but look at that. Is that not beautiful? Again, it'll be pH dependent. So in this spot, hers are pink, but just doing really well right here. 
another gorgeous David Austin Rose, and then more Baptisia. This is the Blueberry Sunday though, so she's got some here. And then um, if this is kind of the center of her bed, right, then she somewhat keeps it balanced. So she's got the Bartzala um, Yellow Peony here in front of that Blueberry Sunday, and then as she comes down, then she repeats that again. So it gives the bed balance with um, a fun echinacea that she got on clearance. It was like a free like giveaway because they were nearly dead. So she just grabbed them, uh, <laughs> plopped them in the ground, and look at that. So she's not sure, doesn't know at all what the uh, variety, the cultivar is, but I just, I think they're stunning. They are so incredibly pretty. And then she's got her fairy trail bride hydrangeas. She's got three of those back there as well. And then moving on down, do you not love this sweet little gazebo? How cute is that, right? So this is on the back corner of their property with um, an oak leaf hydrangea back here. She's got the um, banana shrub. So this is the stellar ruby, right? So this is a magnolia. And then of course, lots of hibiscus in here. This is the French vanilla. That was a beautiful, nice, soft, creamy yellow. And then she's got another of the nine barks back there in the back. And then all around the gazebo, she's got the Atlas roses. Atlas roses right here um, that she has just recently had to trim back because they were had done with their first real big flush of flowers. Daisies, lamb's ear, sedums, um, the serendipity alliums are in here. So that would be like the purple up against the peach of the Atlas rose just a sweet little space. Wouldn't you just want to like come and sit under here? They got a speaker so you can play music. They've got a fan, all the beautiful flowers, the clematis, just gorgeous. And then one of the Invincibles, um, this is either Ruby or Malvet. She can't remember which one it is, but just a great spot for that. Look at that, isn't that great? I'm telling you, once I understood and learned how to grow these Invincible, hydrangeas for us that means morning sun afternoon shade man they just do a great job of course you got to have a hammock right now you'll notice back here in the back they've got massive crepe myrtles back here and these um, are a beautiful purple uh, <laughs> beautiful purple and um, let's see if I can get in the shade a little bit here so because they are gone a lot right weeks upon weeks at a time. And so they had some folks come and trim the crepe myrtles. Well, you can see what happened is that they took the, they took the tops out of them. And yeah, that's not, a, that's not exactly how you trim a crepe myrtle, but it is what it is and the tree will be fine. Um, but what has caused kind of the biggest problem is because these trees were massive, like they went way up into the evergreens back there. Um, and so Tina had planted and planned all of this as a shade garden. Well, she's lost a lot of her shade. So it will be interesting as the season progresses. Yes, crepe myrtles flush out pretty quickly, but how fast are they gonna flush out and will they be able to protect the hostas underneath it? So that is kind of her uh, conundrum right now because you can see she's got some beautiful hostas all throughout there and right now they're in a good bit of sun so it'll be interesting to see how how all that evolves and then look at this beautiful dogwood this is one of the dogwoods that they got from us um, just a beautiful bright beautiful bicolor and then some wygillas right so nice dark dark color love that color contrast against the two of them and then look at this big beautiful cherry tree y'all so this was a Kwanzan cherry tree. Um, I cannot imagine what it looks like when it is in bloom. Tina said they um, purchased this and planted it like the year after they moved in. So this tree is like 28 years old. It is massive and they're dealing with some disease. They're treating it, um, but they're just trying to hold on as long as they possibly can with this big, beautiful tree. And then of course, all oh, their gorgeous hostas under here, right? Beautiful, beautiful hostas. Um, but as we move around here, um, some of you folks are gonna know exactly what they battle in their garden. Uh, 
can you see what happened to their hostas? You want to take a gander as to what happened? Yep, the deer. So they do have to battle deer in their garden and they came <laughs> They came through one night and did some damage in, in their hostas. But Tina has found, it's the, um, I believe it's called wireless deer fence. And so what it is, these little stakes right here that you put in the ground. Let's see, can you see that right here? So the green, the blue right there. So you put the stakes in the ground. You just set them in there, has a battery in there. And then the blue part, has a, a scent, a fragrance that will kind of attract the deer. And then that little metal on the top, when they touch it, they get a little electric shock on their nose. Now this is not like, you know, gonna do anything to like permanently harm the deer, but it's just like, you know, like when cows go up to an electric fence and they touch it, they get a little shock and they're like, oh, nope, can't do that. So the great thing about this is there's no wires. It is all battery operated. So wherever she has had damage or she knows that plants that deer are attracted to, her roses, her hibiscus, the hostas, she places these and it really does help. <laughs> when the deer came through, she did not have these right here. Um, so she has since put them in here around these hostas and, and trying to battle them. But she has had great success with them um, in, in the rest of her garden because this is the only spot that I have seen any damage from deer in this spot. Um, but it has, this is just an absolutely beautiful oasis of a garden here. Um, so it doesn't matter your size of your garden, whether you have, you know, five acres, eight and a half acres, 32 acres, or less than an acre, or you have a balcony, or you just have one little patch, right? It's not about, um, competing and comparing yourself to other gardeners it is about creating a space in your environment like where you are and just creating that beautiful garden that you want to go to that you want to spend time in when you can kind of escape some of the the trials and tribulations of this world and you can get out here and just have fun and enjoy your space and tina and archie have certainly like embraced that and just done an absolute marvelous marvelous job and for the jobs that they do have being away for weeks upon weeks at a time it's smart right so they have installed the irrigation that comes on with the timers they do have their nephew does live nearby and so when he when they're gone he will come and he'll mow the grass for him and he'll just kind of do a once over and send tina pictures of something that doesn't look quite right she'll tell him what to do um, so they do have somebody that does come by the house and keeps an eye on it and make sure that everything's operating and and doing how it's um, performing how it's supposed to but just an absolutely gorgeous area whether it is full sun shade native plants pollinator attractors um, old plants that have been here for 30 years almost and then brand new additions as well so i hope you have found this fun informative and inspirational i know that i have and it was absolutely well worth me taking off the morning and and driving up here to see our sweet friends one because i get to see my sweet friends and then two to get be able to um, just experience their gardens because they're just fantastic um, looking back here i'm going to show you the view that i'm looking at right um, you just get to see all of those gorgeous gardens and the birds are singing, they're chirping, the hummingbirds have been around, we've seen the butterflies, um, just absolutely gorgeous. I love it. June is a good time to be a gardener in North Carolina, for sure. All right, my sweet friends, as always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.